plan to achieve uh, great marks. Great marks. Uh, it's still the same system of Bantu education. I want to go to university. And then become a lawyer. I want to do law. The teachers who are now standing in front of kids in township schools don't know what a functional school is. The whole school system is mm. broken apart. It's, it's falling apart, actually. Mm. The, the schools became just far too politicized and caught up in the political struggle. The administration itself is not functioning and um, the teachers are becoming politicians. Town, a settler town in South Africa, and it's quite absurd that this year we're celebrating 200 years of colonialism in this parade. But I guess in some ways, South Africa is quite an absurd country. Some things have not changed at all, and most black people who live here are poor and struggling. But there are people like me, who now have better lives than our parents, thanks to democracy and education. I'm Johanna Mabungu, a filmmaker from Grahamstown. And I'm trying to find out how we can fix our education system so that everyone can walk tall. I'm taking my daughter to a former white school in the suburbs. Many black parents are doing this, even those who live in townships, because township schools still seem as chaotic as during apartheid. I think a lot of parents feel conflicted about this, about what it means for our children to have only white teachers to look up to, what it does to their sense of self. But there are no other options. When she's older, my daughter will be going to a school like Victoria High. That's why I was so surprised when some of the children told me the white principal was leaving to head up a township school. Um, guys, how did you feel when you heard that Mrs. Kuman is leaving the school? Um, I was quite sad because then Mrs. Kuman was like a second mother to me. And he, Swarazi? It's quite sad, you know, because Mrs. Kuman played a huge role in our lives and now he's, she's living an empty space in our hearts. And I'm excited at what lies ahead at Mitsika. I really am looking forward to it, no matter how hard this is today. I'm driving here. I didn't know what to expect the first day. You know, I felt that I'd made the right move and that this was the way it was to be. The word Nsika means pillar. So for me, the first day was to start the, the image of, or the symbolism of a pillar, and that unless you have a strong foundation, that pillar is going to blow over. In the next few months, Madeline tackled some of the challenges of bringing discipline and systems to Nsigahai, where they had been without a principal for a while. There were many difficulties, but also inspirations, like the head boy Wandelikatu. He was from a humble home and was doing really well at school. For him, going through a traditional Isikosa rite of passage into manhood was just as important as his schoolwork. <laughs> The township and the suburbs are very different worlds in Grahamstown. Here, African culture, Isikosa, is what is important. The 
In some ways, Medellin Schoolman's journey is the opposite of mine. I moved from a township school to a white school as a teenager back in apartheid days. My mother somehow found a place for me after I told her that a group of boys at my school were threatening to rape me. I think it's thanks to my education that I was able to achieve so much more than many of my friends who were left behind in township schools. What's happening in education is not right, not by any, any measure. Just the absolute inequality and unfairness towards the children, it's, it's wrong. Your biggest problem at a school like Nsika is not that people, the teachers don't want to, it is lack of resources and, um, or, or lack of money. You know, if you have good textbooks, you can, children can help themselves, but we are being kept under by the education departments. We cannot run a school like that with 219,000 rand for the next year and a half. I mean, that's... It's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It just means that children are denied. A few months later, the final exams. Then the results came out. Four learners out of 42 qualified for university. Thank you for everything. Uh, no, not everything. Everything. I thought a lot because I wanted you to just do better. But look at this now. Uh, oh, that's great. For your shaking. <laughs> you know, you must let Brother Timothy know. Will you? Go show him. Will you? I will. Okay. Thank you very much. Silly child up there. So that's really good. Now you can be very proud of the work that you've put into this. Huh? It's very good. You have to. <laughs> wow. You can just sign here. Sign your life away. But you got it. Let's just make this work for you now. Right. You've overcome many hurdles, so this is just the next one is getting into university now. But more than half the learners fail, much to Madeline's disappointment. The results are not good. I mean, it's, all, it's a 47% pass rate, but it's better than the year before. The maths result this year, I think, was not very good because they didn't have a maths teacher last year. Because for the whole of last year, grade 11, they, they did very little math. I think they only had a teacher during the first term. We in for a very, very tough ride this year. We're supposed to lose four teachers. And, you know, how do you even begin to do that teach year with, with four fewer teachers? It was not long after that when hundreds of teachers across the province were told that they were going to lose their jobs. The powerful teachers union, SATU, responded by calling for a go slow, leaving children with no teachers from 11 in the morning. Here at Nziga, both mathematics teachers now stand to lose their jobs. That's why you are seeing, is, you are seeing us leaving today, because it's, at, it's as early as before 11, but we have no choice because we are directly affected. Hi. So, Mrs. Schoolman, we just wanted to know from you how you feel about the strike today. Uh, remember, it's always a strike. It's a go slow. It's a go um, slow. How could a province that's already virtually standing still, you know, go slow? How, how slow is that? Are you dead then? All of the school in Eastern Cape are suffering with our teachers. The teachers, they have a union that protects them. Satu. The kids, they have no one to defend them. No one.